Yeah, good evening. Um, I'm the last one um, for a talk. Um, it's very nice to be here. Thanks for having me here. Um, thanks for the invitation. Um, it's amazing and interesting um, how much similarities are between both companies because I'm from Deutsche Post DHL and um, they have their headquarters as well in uh, Bonn and uh, they have an agile development team or more 16 uh, agile development teams here in Berlin. Um, so it's uh, the name is basically the same, the past is maybe um, or um, basically the same so it's quite interesting and I will talk about some same stuff um, but I'll try to keep it uh, maybe more shortly. So um, it's basically, first of all, um, the first 50 minutes are more like um, a meta level, and the last 15 minutes um, or 10 minutes are more about on a concrete way like uh, Ole um, told you. So first of all, it's, a, it's maybe a question, and it's maybe my whole statement, because um, the question was for me, is it maybe a clash of cultures to have a startup within a, a big corpora corporation because Deutsche Post DHL about 500,000 uh, employees and uh, nearly in 220 companies or uh, countries um, around the world. So it's maybe one of the globalized um, companies uh, we have here. Um, and so maybe it's a clash of cultures if you have a huge company which is very traditional about 500 years um, of, of, of tradition and, have, and, and, and we're talking about Agile, and we're talking about Lean Management. It sounds quite like a paradox, right? So um, for me, it's a question, is it a clash of cultures, and is it maybe a clash of, of mindsets, uh, which we're talking about? So um, but my statement is quite clear. To use Lean and Agile inside a global player is difficult. Um, it's very hard, uh, especially <laughs> at Deutsche Post DHL, but it's really worth it. So. Um, um, I have to sit down for a few moments because today, um, or in the, in the last day, there was a bumblebee and um, they uh, set me in my feet, so um, I hope you, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for that. So, um, first of all, as I mentioned, it's, it's more on the, on the meta level. Um, why lean, lean management and agile development um, inside a global player? I think for all of you, it's quite clear, crystal clear maybe, why you have to use lean startup methods or why you have to do agile development uh, in a startup. So it's quite clear, um, we have from Eric Ries, for example, and a lot of other guys, we have um, a crystal clear view on that, in my opinion. Um, but the point is, why we are doing this inside a global player? Um, and for me, it's a situation, uh, basically, we have changing economic circumstances um, and very fast. So, um, one important thing, and only you told this as, as well, um, is the time to market. And um, so as, um, I don't know um, who of you knows, uh, knows Schumpeter of Creative Destruction, but um, he talks about uh, Creative Destruction, so it's getting faster and faster, industrialization, post-industrialization, fundamental changes like internet is coming and all stuff like this, so it's getting really, really fast and faster, and um, these are basically the hardest complications for big companies because the big companies are basically founded on a functioning business model, um, on cash cow philosophies, yeah, like um, the BCG, BCG metrics and they are more like, um, okay, we have, we have a functioning business model, why we should change anything? And it's, of course, it's a question, but if we are talking um, about changing economic circumstances in general, um, I think um, the solution has to be, we have to be, if, if we want to be tomorrow maybe the market leader in logistics or wherever, um, we have to change as well with the economic circumstances. So um, it's more from, in, in my opinion, um, the solution is a fast recognition of market opportunities. So. I do not build markets, in my opinion, yeah. There are a lot of marketing guys um, who would uh, disagree, but in, in my opinion it is, um, I do not build market, I recognize market, and it's very, very important, like Clay Christensen in Innovator's Dilemma describes, it's very, very important um, that you do it very fast. So recognize your market, and then take a fast advantage of this market. And um, then maybe you have to change 
your, uh, your business model as well. Um, it could be. Um, very interesting is here, for example, um, IBM, it's not Deutsche for CHL, but um, as well, a huge company from mainframes to PCs to, um, I don't know, um, consulting services. Um, so I think it's, it's very amazing, yeah, also um, how they change their business model. They have one leg, <laughs> okay, and it's a bad, it's, it's maybe a bad example, actually, so when I'm sitting, but um, they have one leg, they are standing at, and the other leg they are playing with. Um, so, and I think maybe one of you or a few of you knows Bayersdorf, and they have the um, the blue Nivea cream stuff. Yeah, maybe all of you know this. Um, and this is their leg they are standing on. And they have played, for example, um, a few years ago, maybe 10 years or 15, I have no idea really, but um, they have played with Nivea Men, for example. And it's a huge success. There are, of course, their failure stories, but um, Nivea Men is a huge success. And maybe it's one of the um, legs you're standing at in the future, maybe. So um, another point is, the long-term decisions, so as I mentioned, it's more on the meta level, the first 15 minutes. Um, another important question or another important problem is for me, um, the long-term decisions, where are those the short-term decisions? Because I don't know, often if you choose um, between a short-term decision and a long-term decision, it could be a contrary output. Um, it depends often. So and. Um, if we are thinking in a, in a global company um, of, for example, shareholder value, um, if you're talking about our stockholders, um, we are talking usually, um, Ben Thompson would disagree, I think, but um, I think it's, 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 for me it's, it's quite clear. Um, if we're talking about Deutsche Post DHL, we're talking about stockholders and we're talking about a very short term. They want to reduce costs, for example. They want, yeah, you, maybe you, you all have heard it in, in the media. Um, they want to, to reduce cost, and usually reducing cost and innovation. So, yeah, faster innovation circles like Schumpeter, uh, innovative, innovative destruction. And on the other hand, reduced cost doesn't fit. Maybe it's, it's in the short term the right way, but in the long run, for example, 10 years, in my opinion, it's absolutely the wrong decision. So, um, what, what are we, we are trying? Uh, what are we trying to do? Um, it's not like Google or Facebook, which have shelled us as well, but they have no real influence, to be honest. Um, that's quite a luxury situation, but um, we, we do not have this luxury uh, situation. We have some more problems. It's in a huge company. You have often political decisions. So, you have, of course, you have qualitative data. You have quantitative data, but as well you have um, some, some, some political decisions you can't ever imagine. So um, it's, it's quite amazing um, how some things uh, go in a way which you can't even imagine. Um, so I, I will give you an example um, how, it's, how it's working at Deutsche Post DHL. So um, I work at a business unit which is um, more in writing letters stuff section business unit and it's um, so everybody knows um, since the invention of uh, for example email communication or social media communication or whatever um, the letter market is decreasing of course it's not decreasing as we thought but um, it's decreasing so in, in this point we have to think about in the long term um, it's, it's a market of um, billions um, of, of euros that we have to think in the long term, and maybe, um, as Clayton Christensen um, stated in, in one of his um, articles, maybe it's, it's a good way um, to build a startup inside a corporation and to be the, the leg you're playing with, to generate new ideas, maybe in the context of logis logistics, maybe not. Um, maybe it's a good idea. Um, Clayton Christensen stated as well, um, they the, the, the global player do not have to have any, any influence um, at the startup. It's not really working for us, but um, I think um, it's, it's really quite interesting. So, um, as a summary, we have changing economic circumstances. We have to react very fast. Usually, um, at global players, you can't react very fast. 
yeah, you are a big fish, uh, you are a, a big oil tanker, whatever, yeah, what similarities and uh, metaphors we're using, but it's, 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 quite, um, it's quite often the same problem. Um, you can't have a good time to market. So at Deutsche Post DHL, we are facing these uh, complications. And the question is, what are possible solution to this messy situation? And um, yeah, so a, sh a short time, I mentioned a few keywords um, for, for Deutsche Post DHL, but I really want to understand how huge this company is. And one important thing is, um, this company is built on logistics, is built on, um, on, on a stuff like um, on time, on quality, on budget. And if you think of these three terms, I don't know if anybody of you thinks about agile development. I don't think so. Um, I hope so, um, not, because it's, it's Maybe it's, it's quite contrary. Um, of course, it's interesting, but I, I think it's, it's, it's in, or my first impression, wa impression was it's, it's quite contrary. Um, it's maybe the opposite of, of lean and, and agile. Um, so th this is about Deutsche Post DHL, 220 companies, um, the billions of dollars, EBIT, um, and uh, as well 220 countries in the world. So stuff like this. So. Um, Taking fast advantage of market opportunities at uh, DPDHL. As I mentioned before, or not really, um, the goal is to recognize a market really fast and then to bring new products into this market very fast. And um, the point is, we tried different solutions. For example, we tried outsourcing. Okay. Um, it works sometimes, sometimes not, it depends. Um, sometimes we outsource development, sometimes product management, sometimes ideas, whatever, UX, QA, uh, yeah, you name it. Um, the same as, as the same we tried in-house, um, in-house agile, in-house lean, in-house waterfall, uh, we tried as well. And I have two, two different more approaches. The first of all is, uh, for example, what Google is, especially Google is, is very, very good at. Um, they are very good at um, uh, venture capital. Um, so they invest in a lot of startups and they have insights about the startups, about their philosophies, about the purpose, why they are doing, why they are building these fucking products. They have really amazing insights and they can decide whatever they want. They can, they can decide, is it maybe an advantage for us with our negotiation skills, with our marketing, um, with our brand, whatever, they can decide if it's, a if it's maybe a huge uh, success story um, when we buy uh, this company. And the last one is, yeah, to build a startup inside a, um, inside a company. And that's what we are um, talking about. And so w what we did at Deutsche Post DHL, we did all this stuff. Now we did all of that, some, some worked out, something no, but today we're talking about a startup inside um, a global company. And an example is here, the so-called EPOS development um, company, which has about um, 150, 170 uh, employees. And um, they have about 16 or 18 agile teams. I mentioned, I think I mentioned before, and um, so they were found, founded about three years ago. They have agile development methods. So um, it's, it's all about um, agile. The, the, point is, the point is more like, um, I think for, 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 for me, it's, it's maybe not how I describe this company. You can all imagine we have continuous deployment. We, we, have, um, we have really short release circles in this way. We have working software really fast. So all IT agile stuff is in there. Uh, we tried a lot and I think we're quite good at it. But the point is the other rest of the company is um, not really agile and it's basically in hierarchies thinking and it's basically so called waterfall. So we started as well with waterfall in Berlin, um, then scrum fall, so maybe a combination between these both aspects 
And afterwards, um, yeah, well, I usually process methods like uh, Kanban and Scrum and you name it. Um, so what are the lessons I, I learned about? Um, is it possible to have a startup within a corporation? And what is important? Um, only in my opinion, there are a few would disagree, but um, in, in my opinion, it's, it's especially important two things. Um, you have to have the same mindset inside the company, inside, inside the whole company. It's, it's not really possible, or it's possible, but it's really, really hard when you have different mindsets and different cultures. It's, it's really, really hard. Um, if you have the same mindset, for example, an agile mindset, so um, you do your product evaluation process, um, as Ole described for us, very nice. Um, and so if you do your, your process, um, but you, you do not have a problem solution fit, for example, or you have no problem at all, so you have a crazy as hell solution, <laughs> but you have no problem, um, you will do. You, you never have any successful product. Um, so when there is some, um, I don't know, a B two level a management decision like, okay, Torsten, your boss from your boss from your boss told you to do this product um, because my mom likes it. Um, it sometimes um, it it could be a success, but it couldn't be. You do not have. Uh, you, you haven't evaluated it at all. So um, I think to sharing the same mindset, that you evaluate product, that you find a problem solution fit, that you find a solution market fit, all these, these things are, are extremely important. And I think, or in my mind, it was very helpful to argue in, in, in Berlin um, to, to the headquarter with quantitative and qualitative data. Um, so you can argue with data a lot more better, better than but Eric Rees told me, or, had, or, or you mean something like, like, yeah, Ben Thompson is, is quite interesting, and Clayton Christensen, and Y Combinator founded all the startups in, in the Valley. It doesn't matter. It, it usually doesn't matter. Um, so the next point is um, use lean and agile methods, um, uh, quite for sure, and focusing on, on creating a product customer's love. It sounds... Um, I, I know at a lot of meetups, um, a lot of guys uh, talk about how you create products customers love. I think um, Kevin Hale from, from Wufu is maybe one of the best examples. Stanford lessons, I don't know if everyone, uh, everybody, everyone knows one from the Stanford lessons. Look at YouTube, um, they are sometimes quite amazing from, from Y Combinator. Um, so you can focusing, of course, uh, or you should focusing on, on creating um, products customers love. And maybe, it looks a little bit familiar um, to the one that Ola showed us, showed us because it's, it's, of course, it's our own build, measure, learn circle. Um, so it's, it's maybe sometimes it's a little bit the same I, I would talk about. Um, so the goals are to develop software products um, very fast and very successful, to minimize risk. And I told you before, I think in my opinion, it's very important to argue with quantitative and qualitative data. So um, how I try to argue this situation is often like, okay, we have some, some real costs yeah, for um, development. It's a, a huge cost for development. I think all of you know it. Um, it's main cost um, we have usually. So it's so important to have a good evaluation before because usually product managers UX are uh, yeah, a lot more cheaper. Um, so you have real costs and you have as well opportunity costs. And if you do not evaluate, if, if you evaluate, it's quite difficult of, of, for me, your, your product, your idea, um, you usually have a lot of cost, real and opportunity. So to minimize your risks um, in real and opportunity costs, you, um, you have to do some, some um, um, evaluation. And I think it's very important too to measure in business value. Um, I think at, at Immoscout, for example, they have some drive, some, some drivers um, rating skills. So they have, um, I, I, don't know, I, I don't know if I remember it correctly, but um, they have some, some drivers. So what is important for you, for example, EBIT or your purpose, your vision, your mission statement? Or is it maybe customers, your, your, your main KPI, your one main KPI, which is your key performance indicator? 
Um, so they have a lot of drivers and you have a lot of people there um, and they all were talking about the same idea and all are rating this idea under different drivers. And um, I think Moscow is, is quite, quite good at this, but um, I, I do not know for, for sure. So in, at Deutsche Post DHL, we have, um, or in, in Berlin here, we have a few phases. First of all, it's a scouting phase. So we have about 100 ideas, for example, or yeah, in, in our example, we have about 1,000 ideas. Um, and uh, yeah, that we're, we're taking 100. It's maybe easier for my mathematical skills. Um, so 100 ideas in the scouting phase. What we're doing in the scouting phase is basically um, we are trying to generate ideas and prioritize ideas. And um, this is the first thing. Afterwards, we are in the discovery phase. It's basically the main, or it's, it's in my opinion, it's the important phase we have in the whole process because in this phase, we, we try to find the problem solution fit I was talking about and the solution market fit um, because um, Usually, if you have 100 ideas in the scouting phase, you have a so-called um, gate between scout and discovering phase. All important stakeholders are in there, and we are trying to not to, to validate usually um, this idea, but we are trying, um, on contrary, um, more like falsification. Um, so it's more important to find a solution, or it's more important to find arguments for why it, isn't it functioning because all what is going into development is, is extremely costly, as I mentioned before. After the discovery phase, we have a next gate, and then we are talking about, okay, should we develop it or not? Um, usually it's the case, 100 ideas, 10 in the discovery phase, and one in development. Um, okay, sometimes, um, sometimes it's, there is a management like B2, and uh, we have to do this that we're trying um, to, to put all ideas into the scouting phase. And we have the development phase. So in the development phase, of course, we are implementing the solution, um, agile methods, and afterwards, yeah, build, measure, learn circle. Um, I think we all know it. Um, it's more like measure and learn um, metrics and um, iteration. So I have about 10 minutes. This the count or not? Shorter? Okay, five minutes. Okay, so um, only if it's uh, only if you're interesting. Maybe uh, we, we can cut it here. Um, we can make a cut here, or we can have a, a shorter or a closer look at uh, all four phases um, as you wish. It's it's your decision. Hand ups um, if if we want to cut it down um, exactly here and have more time for questions and answers. It's okay. Okay, not really. Okay, so um, the scout. It was a quite good question in this direction. Um, scouting. First of all, uh, we have some tool and methods. Um, it's a fast rating methods. We have some idea list, and we have a, we have a lot of methods um, uh, correlated to design thinking. The definition definition of done in this context is: we have a vision vision fit. We have a mission fit. Um, we have, of course, our lean canvas with um, defined fields. It's not like Alex Osterwalde's uh, Lean Canvas. Um, it's a little bit different. Um, and it's very important, in my opinion, to have a responsible person um, for this scouting phase. Um, and stakeholders are more than welcome. The discovery phase um, is about falsification. It's not like Porsche. I don't know if you know the story. I don't know if it's really true. Um, yeah, of course, you tell a lot of stories, but um, a lot of them are not true. Um, but Porsche should, they, they, I don't know, there's a story like, um, hey, I want to build fast cars, and um, his wife told him it's a bad idea, and all of them told him it's a bad idea, but uh, he did it. So and he was quite successful. In our case, um, we would never have built Porsche, um, because um, we ask a lot of people, like, um, we're trying to have problem interviews. What's the problem? So it's really deep dive interviews uh, with our customers. What, are the, what is the problem? We have customers, so it's often the case you have a problem, you have maybe a solution, but you are asking the wrong persons. Yeah? You, you, you're asking people who never would use your product, for example. So there has to be a fit between problem, solution, and customers, an explicit fit. And I think this is maybe the most difficult um, type in this uh, context. 
and we have solution workshops as well. So the definition I've done is if you have to find a problem, a real problem, you have to find a solution, you have to find your customers, and you have your KPI defined, you have a lean can with, with defined fields, you have to vote at the gate, as I mentioned before, and then that's then then it's next next uh, and then it's going to the next phase. Um, yeah, development. Um, I think it's quite clear. We have a product workshop. Um, usually, it's important for our product owners um, to have uh, story mapping. Um, I don't know if if anybody knows story mapping. It's it's a really interesting method. I think it's um, for the product owner a huge help. Um, if you do not know it, um, Google it. Ask me. Um, feel free. Um, of course, usability test uh, during the implementation as well, because um, iteration is um, honestly maybe the most important thing um, we have in this process. And we're deciding, um, as well as Ole, and we're deciding, is it a really fast product we can build? So um, maybe um, it's a white label solution, or is it maybe important to connect it with a brand? And then there are security, more th security restrictions, um, more data security restrictions, and all stuff like this. Um, definition of done are, of course, epics, user stories, customer journeys, and so on. Stakeholders are informed. In a global company, it's quite important. Um, thinking about marketing campaigns as well. And, of course, the release your product. Yeah. And the last one, um, measure and learn. It's ba basically, there are two points, qualitative data and quantitative data. Um, I think both are very important. Um, and you should use both, in my opinion, every time, as often you can do it. And um, this is for startups as well, for middle um, management companies or for, for huge companies. Um, we use web tracking, of course. Um, Omniture, it's not really a good choice sometimes. Um, and, uh, and from the log files, Splunk and Grafana. And qualitative data, we have friendly user tests, as Ola mentioned as well. Um, so you're talking with your colleagues or whatever. They are not the right customers but maybe they have an idea um, if it's really a solution which is working or it's only a crazy insight in, inside your head. Um, so beta users feedback, it's, it's really amazing what your users give you for feedback and uh, customer service feedback, user test and all stuff like this. So what is the definition of done? Metrics are measured and the most important point, um, you're really dealing with them because often they are measured, there are some vanity, me vanity metrics, like, okay, it sounds very nice, I have one million downloads, but no one is using the product, yeah? It, it sounds really cool, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so KPIs uh, measured and aware of, um, in my opinion, you have to have only one KPI, um, but it depends, and you're aware of. And you have to have, um, you, 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 you should have a decision like, Stop development, if it's maybe the wrong way, you should do it every time. Some costs are no what you should be afraid of um, in optimal circumstances. Extend maybe development, because it's a product, you have um, a really good growth. Um, change development maybe, or leave it at the way it is maybe. Okay, um, and basically that's it. Thank you very much. So questions for Thorsten. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned building products that customer love. What what are the top three products that, that you've basically brought to that stage so far? Like what which ones have been best accepted in the market? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, I can repeat the question. Um, is there any product um, I have brought to market at Deutsche Post DHL which customers love? No, not really. What are the top three products of Deutsche Post DHL that you've brought to product to market in that fashion? Um, okay, in general, or what the users really love? The ones that you found to be accepted well in the market, yes, so the ones that customers love. Um, Honestly, um, really love? I don't think I don't think so. Um, like, where do you see like the? Okay, it depends because if you're if we're talking about private customers, it's really difficult. If we're talking about business customers, um, it's there are such uh, themes, for example, at Ethos or so. Um, they are not really accepted at the private sector. 
but they are extremely accepted as a business factor. So if we can talk about business customers love product, they love only the, trans the, the reduce of a transaction cost basically. Um, yeah, that it is, but the problem is basically on the price picture. What do you think could change that in the process? Yeah, I think what, a better what is the worst, like, what do you yeah. think is the core thing of, like, what yeah. would you change? Yeah. It sounds very nice what, what I talk about maybe this evening, um, but most important are um, that, we ha we, that we still have this, this really gap between the waterfall thinking um, in, the, in the company and the agile development. So I think what's very important is um, we have the time to have a really good evaluation and it's often the case, um, we do this, but we do it not really enough. And I think this is often the problem. So sometimes we ship products uh, which are more in an alpha or beta state. Um, you can do this, of course, but afterwards you have to iterate. And um, I think, for example, Y Combinator stated the 13th production um, iteration is usually um, at the 100 startups I founded um, or invested, um, the successful one, the 13th. And um, I don't know, at Deutsche Post DHL, we are not nearly at 13th iteration. So we have to improve, but um, I think one word, because it's not so bad as it sounds, um, I think very important is at Deutsche Post DHL, we have, um, we have this, this kind um, of agile process, of lean management process, and it gets from, from month to month more accepted. And it's really amazing how we are influence um, the company. More questions? Okay. Well, I assume there was like a decision making which is basically done by a group of people. Is it time to kill the good ideas and design by committee? I'm just curious about that. Mm. Important is maybe as a, yeah, I don't know um, if, it's, if it's really the best idea, but I think it's the working idea because when you're deciding only in your, um, in your own mind if it's a good idea or a bad idea, you can be really, really wrong. And if you have a corrective, like you're working with some, someone and um, you, you challenge an idea, for example, with someone, it's, it's often the case that you afterwards um, are thinking, oh my gosh, they are totally right um, why this wasn't in my mind. So I think if you have really clear drivers, what is important for you? So for example, um, private customers, I think um, it's a good idea to have all stake or, or, or a lot of stakeholders on board. Um, so how hard is it to actually keep the, the, the stakeholders like on board and not saying okay we didn't really succeed we don't have the mm -hmm. products we love and actually we are like a yeah. we're Deutsche Post so we stick to the, the, the old fashioned way and uh, packet market yeah. um, it's, it's astonishingly uh, it's, it's astonishingly um, easy to keep the stakeholders um, at the desk but the point is we have some, some other problems like for example um, I think at Deutsche Telekom it should be the same we have some planned market marketing campaigns. So um, you have to build sometimes software on time, on quality. And um, this with Agile methods, it's, it's really, really hard sometimes. Of course it is. So um, I think this is more the important problem than to keep the stakeholders um, on the desk. How long do these phases take? Yeah, that's a problem as well. Um, that's really a problem as well. A good, good question. How, do, how long does these phases take? Um, it depends. Um, for example, um, at one of my last product iterations, it took only one week, but it was a 90 hour week and it was extremely hard and full time and my operative work is um, beyond anything. So I don't think it's a good idea. The point is, um, what, we sh what we should put some effort in is there should be, um, and as I, I mentioned it before, responsible persons. So um, it isn't really possible to do it um, on the job for 10% or 20%. Um, you have to do it fully dedicated. 
And I think um, you can do it um, in a good cycle, um, scouting and discovery, so that you're quite clear you have to develop this product um, in two weeks and afterwards develop the product. Um, it depends on the product. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Well, maybe we take it to afterwards with another year, right? Okay. So thank you, Charleston.